Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very 32nd episode of Cooldown Timer. I am your host, Nifu, and with me today, I am joined by Zingles, Artman. You have died of dysentery. And from the frozen wastelands of Alaska. Mark Hamilton. You blew it all up! So, hi guys. Howdy. It's been a while. Uh-huh. I've been frozen in carbonite. Uh, how, what did you, I miss? You've been you've been frozen in ice because you're from Alaska and it's winter. That's clever. That's very clever. I know. I'm, I'm well, we're off to a really energetic that. start today, aren't we? <laughs> uh, I think we should probably uh, just talk a little bit about why we were gone so long. And uh, how that worked out. Uh, mainly it yeah. was due to the fact that we can't stand each other anymore. Yeah, we kind of had this big, huge fight after the last episode. We'd recorded a couple episodes in advance, and one of them, um, I think the last one we did was about uh, overthinking time travel or something. And we did one a couple episodes later where we were talking about the uh, sci- like science fiction technology in real life. And we kind of got a little angry about you know we, we kind of took the uh, conversation a little too far and then we haven't talked it, in the last six months that's uh you know what's really no, that's weird not true i'm so tired right now that i was just like <laughs> did that happen no it did happen <laughs> except for the fight didn't we did an episode yeah. like that which i believe which i'll probably release I believe shortly, the real but... sticking point was the episode we did where we just told boring vacation stories for an hour and uh yeah all of us said this is terrible and we needed to rethink our lives and what we were doing and then we rethought like a new idea of like where the podcast could go and then we were like tried it we were like no nope, nope, not gonna happen <laughs> but we'll go back to just spent, not entertaining anybody we spent months brainstorming reinventing you know it's gonna be a total rebrand new show it was gonna be totally devoted only to nerdy hip topics like game of thrones it even had an awesome name. It was a stupid name. Anyway, moving on. No, it was a great name. I came up with it. It was Fandom Fortress. Yeah. Was we it... still have the URL, so yeah. if we decide to do uh, something with it, but we then, still have the URL. Th- then we discovered uh, something, and that is uh, the only reason Cooldown Timer has ever been entertaining is because we were actually uh, wanted to talk about what we talked about. Speaking of things we want to talk about, let's talk about things, because I'm tired of introing. <laughs> it's only been, like, three minutes. It's been three yeah. minutes too long. So I got Dragon Age Inquisition, and it's awesome, and you guys should both play it. I haven't played it. That's uh, that's valid. No, I have, I've never played any <laughs> of the Dragon Age games. I've uh, played I played the first one, and I, I tried so hard to love the first game, but I got it kind of late, and so the mechanics were already kind of clunky. Uh, I see. But this one's the mechanics aren't clunky. They're 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 nice and smooth. Well, you know, uh, Dragon Age is the same people that made Knights of the Old Republic back in the day. Yes, and Mass Effect. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Great game. I, I was just thinking of Knights of the Old Republic because um, I watched a they guy. They released it on Android recently. That seems like a bad way to play. Nah, that game was but like at you least could. You wouldn't you notice could... how dated the graphics are on such <laughs> a tiny screen. Yeah, I just mean all the dialogue. Like, who wants to sit there with your little Android phone listening to Karth go yeah. on and on? Karth, um, he was the one that was basically copy pasted into Mass Effect as Caden, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you know, there was Karth so nasty. Yeah, there was a ton of dialogue in that game. How was the? How much dialogue and stories there in Dragon Age Inquisition? Um, less than Knights of the Old Republic, I'd say probably. I mean, there's there's probably more gameplay, but the gameplay is really fun for me. I'm I'm very much enjoying it. I like what? running in with my shield and just smashing. Also, I found an awesome hidden item, so that game really rewards you for like exploring and and stuff like that. And I was just cli- I was glitching myself up this hill randomly as I want to do. As Skyrim has taught me, it's never a good idea, but I always do anyway. They can't talk me out of it. Uh, I get to the top, and there's this table, and I'm like, oh, look, there's a table up here. I wanted, there's probably some lore or something. So I go over to it, and there's a cheese wheel on the table. And I'm like, this is a cheese wheel. That's weird. So I pick up the cheese this wheel. It does seem like Skyrim. I pick up the cheese wheel, and it's a it's a 
a rare shield called the Wedge of Destiny. And it is a full on like foot and a half wide, nine inch thick wedge of cheese with a dagger sticking out of it. Um, that, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty cheesy item. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, I'll for Skype that doesn't work as yeah. well. Yeah, no, you guys are um, not synchronized. Uh, uh, speaking of games that we got over Christmas, Zam, let's tell Mark about the Escapist. Oh my gosh, that's a trippy ass game. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what is this? I've never heard of this. Um, it's basically a. It's part prisoner simulator part prison break simulator prison break was a cool show um on television basically it's this like it's kind of got like almost linked to the past-esque graphics and you're a prisoner and you're trying to escape from prison do you have a sword uh no but you can get various weapons are there little uh, beetle things that run around no no. It's nothing like Link to the you Past. You have to rescue princesses. No. No, you're trying to escape prison. The graphics are like Link to the Past moving on. Are the <laughs> like princesses grass... in prison? I'm going to kick you. No, you're in prison. <laughs> are you a princess in this game? <laughs> Not that I'm aware no. of. No, anyway. I mean, it's... You could role play it that way if you want. It's, it's, very, uh, it's a very neat game because uh, you can... It's both... Go ahead. It's both like, you know, it's both this more simplified version of of you know trying to break out of a prison but it's also kind of complex because it's like oh i'm gonna oh there's a vent above my bed so i'm gonna unscrew it and sneak around in the ventilation system what do you mean they were walking around in the middle of the night and they saw my bed was empty oh i better make a bed dummy next night and i'll put that in my bed so they think that i'm in bed and then you know then i'll go up there and it, and then you also have to, like, close the vent behind you, or you can dig a hole in your cell or somewhere else, or you can break through the walls, or you could, like, I don't know, there, there are various ways that you could try to now, escape, but you can't, oh, God. The thing about it, though, is that there's all these ways you can escape, but you're in a prison, and prison has a very strict um, daily routine that happens, and you have to follow that routine, or people start getting suspicious. I mean, if you don't show up for lunch, they're going to come looking for you, and the first place they're going to check is your cell. Um, and so you What's have the to last place they will look because that's where I will escape. Probably the computer room. I will escape that's using where I the power have. of the internet. <laughs> anyway, and then you have certain skills you can uh, raise by like either working out or, whoa, or whoa, 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 researching whoa. online and what. What are these skills? Strength, speed, and skills? intelligence. Those uh, aren't no, skills. but you can you Those can craft shivs. Yeah, and and the higher your 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 intelligence, the uh, the more stuff you can craft. Can you and win by serving your time? No, that was what I was no. going to do. <laughs> <laughs> can you get out early on good behavior? Um, but yeah. No, but you cannot get killed by it. Why, why do you one. want to break out of prison? Like, is there you're a valley that's you're... about to be flooded that has no. buried treasure in it? I, I will uh, tell you why. I will tell you why. Was your brother Cause... framed for a crime he didn't commit, and then you committed a crime just to get in prison to break out with him? No, you're Job from Arrested Development. It's a publicity stunt. <laughs> I got some enough references. No, no, no why? why? <laughs> so it's a fun game, huh? It's pretty fun. It's yeah. It's it's both like really fun and really engaging and really, and really frustrating. frustrating because it's just like oh, I I just spent the last hour collecting the gear I need in order to escape. But I didn't know that I needed to have a body thing or a poster to cover the hole in the wall that I made. Or I ran out of screwdrivers, so now I have to use plastic forks to try to break through this wall. And now I've run out of plastic forks. So now I'm trapped And then here, you ran out of energy once, right? You got stuck or something like that? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I dug a hole underneath my cell and closed the hole up behind me. Um and ended up running it was i think it was almost yeah i think it was energy or something i ran no 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 it was the my shovel ran out oh and then you got so... and you had filled in the hole behind you right yeah, yeah that's what yeah, it yeah. was yeah i didn't do that when i dug all and neither of us have managed to escape the first prison yet it's not easy <laughs> well i think that there's it's not one it's not easy but two we've also been learning the mechanics it's like oh yeah hey, you can use this basic thing that you've been ignoring for this long in order to make a mold in order to 
make copies of the keys. Yeah, so- everything we everything we found out, we found out through trial and error. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. I'm sure if you went on Wikipedia and read a walkthrough of how to get out of the first prison, you'd be able to do it. But well, it would be the fun in that. Exactly. It's a lot more fun to get the crap beat out of you and thrown in isolation and uh, make lots of enemies. Oh, also, you can name all the people in the prison. So I named them all after people I know. Uh, you were the guard. And, and yeah, tough. you were a guard and uh, Nifu was a, um, um, a prisoner. And you guys constantly just beat the crap out of each other. It was hilarious. Well, he's really uppity. Yeah, and he kept what trying to I get say? me to beat you up and find him um, pedi- uh, pedicure kits. That makes perfect sense. My nails sense. are very important to me. Mm-hmm. Especially in games that have no relation to him. Um, well, that sounds really so yeah, fun. Pretty, uh, yeah, no, pretty neat. Def- definitely worth checking out if you ever get a couple bucks. I think it's like $15 full price. Quick, quick question. Uh, if you were in a prison, how would you try to escape? How would I try to escape? Yeah, you personally. Uh, by surfing my time. <laughs> okay, but let's say um, you've just... Your wife is about yes. to have a baby. No, no, not just and... about to have a baby. She has been uh, kidnapped by Colombian drug lords. You need to get to Colombia. No one believes you. Uh, only you can save her because you have a particular set of skills. But I don't. Uh, <laughs> if I had a particular set of skills, I wouldn't be me. <laughs> I'd be okay. Liam Neeson. Okay, um, Jackie is buried in a valley that's about to have a dam built on it. It's going to flood in a week. you got to break out of jail. you just got to break out, okay? How would you try to do it? Well, apparently what I would do is cover my cell uh, walls with blankets so people can't see me, steal a million knives from the cafeteria, <laughs> hoard them upstairs in the ventilation shaft, and then saw through the... Uh, through the grates up there, uh, and then have no particular idea of what to do next. So I'd wander around the ventilation shafts before inevitably being caught. <laughs> For a second, I was like, why are you hoarding knives? Are you going to arm the prison population? <laughs> yes, I'm going to arm them with plastic knives. Start a riot. How the heck did you saw through a grate with plastic cudgelly? <laughs> well, it took a long time. <laughs> and it took a lot of plastic yes. knives, too. You could do that in The Escapists. Yeah. Yeah, How would you was... try to break out of jail in reality? Uh, I have no idea. I've never been to jail, and I don't intend to anytime soon. Well, well, I want to know how uh, to do it. Well, first things first, I would uh, I would make a grappling hook. Out of what? Two crowbars and duct tape? <laughs> well, no, like some like some sheets and, um, and maybe a – I was about to say a rock – Maybe I'll maybe I'll find a rock outside in the yard, and somehow I'll sn- or maybe no I'll do a, a handful of like smaller rocks that way I can smuggle them in easier, mm. uh, and then I'll make a grappling hook out of sheets. Okay. And of course, I will steal somebody else's sheets. So if somebody says, "Oh hey, you don't have all your sheets. Where are your sheets?" He's gonna be stealing <laughs> my sheets just to be a dick. Um. Oh, and in the escapists, they do like they do random checkups on on people's rooms, and so if you you can put contraband into other people's rooms and get them into trouble. <laughs> um, That's fun. So yeah, so I'm gonna make a grappling hook, and then I'm gonna incite a prison riot in the yard, so that all the snipers and whatnot will be focused on that, and then I'd grappling hook my way out. That's a better plan than Zingles. I didn't have a plan. The whole point is I have no I idea. I award what... <laughs> you the golden bedsheet board for escaping prisons. Uh, yeah, golden bedsheet. If, if I had to escape a prison, I would um, pretend I have cancer and hope they send me somewhere low security. Didn't they do that in Prison Break or something? No, no, no. No, that was... was real life that someone did that. <laughs> really? <laughs> he faked having cancer somehow. And then I think he faked his own death somehow. Good lord. He, he was really good at uh, manipulating people and documents. Get him into cinema. He's a great actor. <laughs> um, speaking of prisons, um, I also got uh, Prison Architect, this, this Steam sale. I hear sale, that's a depressing game. Is that like the other side of the <laughs> story? Yeah. <laughs> 
Except for in the tutorial, the tutorial ends, spoiler alert, with you executing a guy. But they can't just have you execute a guy. They have to let you know why you're executing him so you at least feel okay with it. <laughs> it is just like the most like... So they're all like little cutesy little drawings. But this guy caught his wife cheating and he murdered both his wife and his wife's... You know, whatever the heck person. I don't know. Never. What, yeah. And, and then you electrocute him. But you can't just electrocute him. You have to build the room that he's getting electrocuted I, I in I have first. to stop you there. Because it just occurred to me, if if a man has a woman on the side, it's a mistress. If a woman has a man on the side, is he a mistress? <laughs> a misterer? Miss. Uh, uh. Mastrum? Miss. Mistress. Misterer? This is stupid. <laughs> this is <laughs> stupid. <laughs> But no, Zingles, Prison Architect is like all the tycoon games, like Zoo Tycoon, mm-hmm. or but it's prisons. <laughs> You're making a prison. Just, I just installed it. Uh. Oh yeah, because we're Steam sharing <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> Steam sharers. Try it out. Well, I got a rather interesting game, among mm-hmm. other games. Uh, Mount your friends. No. Yeah, we need to play that together. We should record it and put it up on the website. That or on the on the YouTube, so maybe. I'm terrible you, at it. Did you play it yet? No. Mark? <laughs> oh, good. We can have first impressions. <laughs> yes. Yes, we can. Um, no, I was talking about the uh, 4X strategy game, Endless Legend. Endless Legend. Which, for people who don't know, is uh, Civilization but fantasy. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Sorry, I I kind of dozed off there for a second. What was that? Oh, it's like civilization, but fantasy, man. Guys, I listen well, I... to a prison story. It's just, it's just. Mark, tell us about endless legends. It just goes no. on and on and on. Listen, Gosh. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you about the mechanics and stuff like that. I could go on. That's fine. I want to tell you guys about the setting. Because it is ridiculous. Okay. Um, one problem with fantasy, and I think anyone who's tried to write fantasy, and I think all of us, in our own way, have tried to write fantasy at some point. In the process. Yeah. Just, you know, noodling around. And one of the hardest things is not making a uh, bone generic fantasy world where you got elves and dwarves and orcs and uh, maybe throw some trolls and giants in there. You know, and all the men are in armor, like knights, and, you know, the mm-hmm. generic fantasy thing. It's hard to escape, uh, and it's hard, it, when you find a really unique fantasy setting, it really stands out because of it. And Endless Legend is one of the most unique fantasy settings I've ever seen. I was telling Zingles about this the other day, but there is a... There was some kind of precursor civilization that left all these ruins around called the Endless. Uh, title drop. And um, Are you ne- eating out of a can? <laughs> no. Are you some kind of animal? <laughs> it's canned peaches. Are you some kind of... Oh, gosh. <laughs> you can't go without peaches for one hour. <laughs> I have coffee sitting just out of reach, but I'm not drinking it because we're recording. <laughs> okay, I'll just I'll just cut to the chase. Endless Legend is a fantasy setting set inside of a sci-fi fit setting. Mm-hmm. So, is there actually like c- continuity between Endless Legends and Endless Space, Space, and Dungeon of the Endless? They're all in the same universe. Endless Space was a space uh, civ game they made before endless legend it's exactly the same universe um Hmm. the endless are actually the precursor race that had a galactic empire and the planet you're on in endless legend was just one of those planets and it it goes beyond that one of the uh the thing is there's a lot of different factions you can play as but a lot of them are just humans different variations on humans and i was like Okay, well, these humans are traitors, these humans are magic people, and these humans just seem like ordinary humans. Huh? And the w- ones that seem like ordinary humans are called the Vaulters. And when you look into their setting, 
they've been living underground for thousands of years in these giant vaults. That's why they're called vaulters. And they had their own underground civilization, but then there was an earthquake and it's forced them to the surface. So if you play as them, it's like, that's the story. You're trying to start a new world civilization on the surface. Um, spoiler alert. The <laughs> vaulters are descendants of a crashed spaceship. And that's what the original vault was, a crashed and buried spaceship. Now you were you were telling me about this game um, a while back, and there are some pretty fun ideas for some of the races and stuff. But I um, I have a kind of problem with this kind of fantasy, and um, I mean they have weird bug people and crazy f crazy mages and all kinds of weird crazy stuff in there that are all fun. However, I have this problem, and I and I don't quite don't. What do their dwarves suck? I don't even know if there were dwarves. There Point are dwarves, is, but they're a minor race, and they're not really dwarvy. Get it? A minor race? They what? mine stuff. What? What? <laughs> anyway, so I what? have this weird problem where, like, when when uh, fantasy is that kind of, like, distant from reality, it kind of breaks the immersion for me. I think what you mean is distant from the bone-dry generic fantasy setting. <laughs> That's because well, Zam is a generic white guy who likes his generic white fantasy. No, I happen to be a white guy, and therefore I happen to play people that generally look like me in video games, and you happen to give me a hard time for that. You yourself were complaining when you were making your own cartoon about how boring you look. Well, that's because I don't wear glasses. Why don't you just want to imagine being a fantastic, exciting, but, but different? No. Okay, so my favorite, I love orcs. I oh, have my I own, like. I have my own like lore for orcs in my head and everything, and I love orcs. I can't play orcs in video games because I cannot physically, well, I guess mentally, not physically. I can't get into them. I can't like, I can't. I'm not an orc. You are a horrible role player. I am not an orc. I am not an orc. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. So I have Isn't to play. Isn't a song? I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a mighty good man. No, he's a... I'm a... Yes, that know. is a song. So so do you prefer your fantasy to just be about people, sort of ordinary people, in a fantastic setting? In general, yes. Uh, explain like explain your love of Game of Thrones. Yeah, and now, and I was actually looking into this a little bit recently, and the question is, how much realism do you need in your fantasy? Because there is a point. Because for me, at least, the more um, the more realistic something is, it makes the fantastic seem more plausible. If everything's fantastic, it's like, well, great. This place is obviously just like fake. But if there's it, it, like obviously fake, Whoa. well, you know what you know what I mean. This it, isn't real. <laughs> to a to a point though, it kind of breaks the immersion, right? Like the thing about Game of Thrones is it looks like a possible no. real Z medieval Europe, but then all of a sudden there's freaking dragons. Zingles, right? I think I know what your problem is. It's <clears throat> not about immersion. Okay, let me hazard to guess your psychology here. Uh, there there was a great writer who most people have forgotten by the name of G.K. Chesterton from the 1800s. And he once said that the point, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but that the point of a fantasy story is that the main character is ordinary um, and is struck with these fantastic things, just like we're ordinary, you know, and then we can react through them. But if the main character is just as fantastic of it as everything else, there's uh, no connection. Um, Would you say that's what you're feeling here? It's like, no. oh, all right, here's fantasy people doing fantasy stuff. No, fantasy um, land. I'm totally fine with with a a, a main. I, I mean, I generally even play kind of more normal, not crazy. Ma I don't like mages or generic anything like that. It doesn't matter. You play generic, whatever you are. <laughs> the <laughs> eh, you I always, you know what? You always play the same character. So don't get on me about always playing the same character. <laughs> The, hmm. Ha ha. <laughs> anyway, moving right well, along. I no, played a bug there's person two variations. The there's of two it. variations. There's either the girl or the feminine guy. Both with what black hair, say? ponytails. I like feeling pretty. <laughs> well, there you go. 
<laughs> we all have our reason why we play what we play. <laughs> it's not because it's on the cover art of all of the shooters out there. It's because that's who I am, and so that's how I identify with the character. Is by I mean you have I, no right to have pride in who you are as an individual. Exactly. If it makes me feel like <laughs> I'm being racially whatevered against. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be honest, I've I've noticed this with you and RPGs. I pretty much never see you play as something that isn't human. Me? Yeah. Yeah. No, Ooh, I ba- human is. Okay, so I I I, I've played D and D forever, right? So, um. I've always wanted to play an orc because, like I said, I love orcs. And so I played one campaign with an orc, and I just I lost interest. I could not get into the character. I'm not an actor. I'm not a role player. Well, I mean, you're I am. A, what do you mean you're not an actor? You've done more acting than the, that doesn't make me an actor. Just because I did enough acting to realize that I wasn't an actor. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Now, so you made me lose my train of thought <laughs> chugga, 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 crash. anyway so um I, I just can't get into it and like mark you know how much i love orcs downright obsessed with them um but i it has to be someone i can relate to or i can't get into it yeah that's fair and i and, and anyway you know me i'm very opposite of that yes yeah. i don't want to play a boring human I want to be See, something out there. Right. But I really think that, and then this is at least my opinion on what makes good fantasy, is it has to have enough realism in it to make those make those fantastical things really pop out. That's, which, that's me personally, at which least. Which is why I think Marvel made a fantastic idea, or made a fantastic decision with starting with Iron Man. I completely agree. <laughs> start off with something that isn't super, you know, out of the way, and then lead him into Well, it's super out of the way, but it's at least plausible in some, you know. Well, yeah, you know, he's fighting terrorists. Not they waited to get aliens in there. And like, uh, this kind of comes into so barring every other parts of the game, just going on pure world. Morrowind versus Skyrim. Now, there's a lot of people that love the world of Morrowind more than the world of Skyrim. That's totally fine. But for me, I like the world of Skyrim more, even though there are a lot of things about Morrowind that I am liking more. Well, no, it makes perfect sense, because most of the people who think Morrowind was the best Elder Scrolls settings is because it was so completely different yes. than normal. Yeah. But, like, and, but the thing is for that is that I don't have anywhere to, like, my brain doesn't have anything to latch on to. You know what I mean? Like, there's got to be that realism in there, and there's nothing in there in in, in Morrowind for me. The Not first guy that... you see has purple skin. What am yeah. I supposed to do? It ain't natural. No, that's fine. But um... Town is up. Red is white. Well, and I, I don't go so far as to say, like, I only want humans. I just can only play humans. I, I have a bunch of fantasy races in my own personal role-playing game that we've been playing. Um, well, you know... I do kind of sympathize a bit, mm-hmm. um, but I think this is, comes from a different place where when I was younger, I, I didn't really care about this sort of thing. But the older I get, the more unrealistic um, weapons and armor uh, gets me out of a game. Right. Well, and that's We're the other thing. All is covered like, in spikes and like yeah. filigree and ridiculous plates, and it's like, this, who could afford such a thing? Why does every foot soldier have this? And it it might be just because like I actually know a decent amount about that time period, you know? Wait, wait, wait! wait. But, Let's do a test. Let's do a test because I'm a bit of a medievalist. You I'm love I, medieval arms and armor. Yeah, arms and armor. Nifu, how do you feel about? fantasy characters that have really ornate and not super practical armor and weapons. But what lots is practical? He doesn't jump. even know what practical is. It's fine. I, I would like probably... lots of spikes and things. <clears throat> um, I will definitely say that there is a point where it kind of just like where I'm like, that just looks silly. Right. But for the most part, I I really don't care. Do you know what game had to me some of the best fantasy in any game I've ever played. Raymond knows. Frickin' Nifu knows. 
the the Nish. Witcher games. The Witcher. Everything in those games, I can my brain can buy. Like the armor looks good, the weapons are good, the uh, the 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 stances and everything are good. Like there are some things about that game that actually got me really interested in armor, and um, things like uh, actually using you know real armor instead of giant pauldrons and stupid things like that. Um, but that game has some fantastic armor and and uh, just gear in general, in my opinion. I mean, there's a lot of cloth armor, but not everyone could afford full plate, you know? That was expensive. We were talking about this the other day when you went on that weird, like, research, you know, obsession. Where, like, medieval, like, combat would just have to be so... Mm-hmm. Violent and, and vicious. Well, yeah, because... Like, especially in, like, to the later centuries, I mean, the knights were pretty much, they were tanks. And so, you know, the one way you could kill them was either half sword, stab them through the visor, or knock them to the ground, rip their visor up, and stab them in the face. Or try to find a tiny, tiny, pe- like, you know, crack in mm-hmm. the armor somewhere else. Yeah. And even if you found a crack, you've still got to go through chain mail, you know, a padded outfit, and then, you know, whatever they got underneath there. Or invent crossbows. Or invent crossbows. <laughs> you know, the Pope made those illegal. <laughs> he was like, you could kill good Christian men with these. <laughs> these are you illegal. take away our Second Amendment rights. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I think actually that is it. I think it's just a case of the more you know. Like, probably chemists do not enjoy Breaking Bad as much as normal people. <laughs> right. You know, no, I, I watched the first season with a science person, and she was like, "Yeah, no, that's off. They would need more of that. That's that acid's not even nearly strong enough. You know, things like that." That that that's probably that's pro- you're probably right, Mark. It, um, but because like know. when I was in high school, I did a huge project for my chemistry class on how to make swords because I talked my teacher into it, <laughs> and chemistry is boring. <laughs> Uh, and after learning just how difficult it is and all these different steps then I'd see some ridiculous battle axe with spikes mm-hmm. everywhere that's the size of someone's torso and I'd be like no that would never work the, the thing that really upsets me is that like there were so many cool weapons and cool armor that were used in the middle ages that just You've, I've literally never seen in a freaking video game. But, like, I mean, things as simple as, like, spears. Spears were the most popular weapon throughout all of history in all countries. <laughs> everyone had a spear of some sort, and everyone could afford a spear. Why are there no video games that have spears? <laughs> It's just practical. You can stick well, them before they can get to well, you. Your, your nope. Mountain Blade game had spears, right? But Mountain Blade tries very hard to be historically accurate in a lot of ways. As far as their... Then, you know what I think the problem is? Um, huh. And I think it's going to be solved. I think if we get better virtual reality, mm-hmm. we're going to see more spears. Because you don't really feel how much better a spear is than other weapons unless you're actually feeling like you're there and you're like, well, I actually want some distance between right. me and these uh, very sharp implements <laughs> so, uh, that so the other guy wants to put in my face. A couple other weapons that I want to I want to yell about are are uh, the mace, the like the, the classic flange mace, which in modern everything has been kind of brought out to be like the bad guy's weapon. That was a very knightly weapon to have. In fact, not only was it a knightly weapon to have, but it was a, it was like a badge of office. People like um, uh, just, you know, different officers and, and sheriffs and stuff like that. Those kind of people would have those um, mainly well, because you could actually... We still act- do that. Uh, we still use blunt instruments as badges yeah. of office. Yeah. But ceremonially. The, the, the point is that it's not the bad guy weapon just because it doesn't have an edge. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> Um, and then uh, we don't see enough of those in games. And when we do, they're always like giant, heavy, meaty clubs that you would never want to actually swing around, you know? Or baseball bats covered in and scissors nailed, yeah. and nails or... <laughs> or giant practice. six... Uh, yeah. What is it? The barbed wire. 
in in la in the last of us you could cover your baseball bat with or you could cover a baseball bat with uh scissors that you had taken apart and oh gosh and hammered that doesn't through. you know like putting barbed wire around a baseball bat i don't think that makes it a more effective weapon yeah probably I think not it makes it a bit more painful but you get stuck on people Mm-hmm. Especially with scissors, <clears throat> but tasty. The, the other thing is that a sword is a sidearm; it always was, um, and that's fine if you want to say, "Yeah, you're a traveling adventurer, so that's why you have a sword. It's kind of your sidearm, and you don't really want to carry another weapon because you're an adventurer, and that's too hard to carry a pole arm with you everywhere." Totally buy that. However, I don't buy doing that in full plate armor. That doesn't make any sense. <sighs> Sorry. But why doesn't it make any sense? Because plate armor was uncomfortable, heavy. When it's hot out, it bakes you alive. When it's cold out, it freezes oh, you. Oh, adventuring in full plate. Okay, yeah, I thought you meant you... just having a sword. But no, oh, no, totally <laughs> no, no. Um, and again, this is something that like that the Witcher does kind of nice. Is the main guy? I mean, he wears like a like a padded gamberson kind of a thing, and uh, and and, and some padded bo- gamberson. Two... Listen to this guy. Two swords, yeah. though he wears them wrong. You would never actually wear them on your back like that. That's just impractical. You knock things down. He brought it up another level somehow. <laughs> and on that incredibly nerdy note... I'm sorry, I like this stuff. I think we've probably come to the end of episode 32 here. Um, none of us actually use our social media accounts for anything, so I'm not even going to plug them anymore. We will once we get more subscribers, we promise. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, and if you're listening to this, you know where to find it, so I don't really... Yeah, because you probably know our real names. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Hello, all those people. No, listen, Uh, if you're listening to this right now, and I mean right now, as it's coming out, or or soon after, I just want to say, you're you're a cool guy or gal. You are a cool person. It's true. Wow, I tell all your friends... I forgot I was recording there. I was just ranting on. <laughs> Sorry, this uh, stuff really bothers me. <laughs> this is a podcast where we keep it real. So, um, of the next couple episodes, I, I'm not sure what the order is going to be, but uh, I'll let you know uh, at the beginning of the episodes if they are new episodes if they or if they are uh, some of the ones we recorded six, six seven months ago. Um because some of them had some pretty good stuff. Like the, one of my favorite episodes that we've ever done is one of those unreleased ones, which is the one that I kind of talked about earlier, where we were talking about bringing science, like fictional technology, into the real life and the repercussions of doing such. Um. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, this was good. Let's uh do this do again, again sometime soon. Yeah. Until next time. Cool down time, yeah.